Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but she is coming back later today, I promise. She's very busy. We went to PowerCon this weekend and she is running to catch up, uh, but she will be back in a later video. So I'm gonna talk about something she doesn't care about, which would be Lord of the Rings. And I'm beginning to think that not a lot of people care about Lord of the Rings coming to Amazon. There hasn't been a lot of hype about it, has there? Uh, I mean, I've seen the media try to get people worked up about it. I've seen a lot of drama on Twitter. Uh, Comic-Con had some, some footage, I guess. Um, but for the most part, it seems like normie geeks are not really talking about Lord of the Rings. And I thought it was just me. And it's not. It turns out it's not. In fact, the rap had this, this up a couple of days ago that they said that uh, House of the Dragon, the Game of Thrones prequel, is actually outpacing Lord of the Rings on Amazon. Uh, Lord of the Rings, the Power of the Rings, the Power of the Rings of the Lord, or whatever the hell they're calling the uh, prequel. So we're going to talk about the lack of buzz around this show, and it's a pretty risky thing for Amazon, right? I mean, you spent how many billions of dollars on this show, and so far a lot of Tolkien purists absolutely hate it. Uh, from what I've seen, I'm not that impressed. Uh, I'm really not impressed. I saw a clip of uh, was it Galadriel doing acrobatics or some crazy ass shit? I don't care. Why is she? Why is she fighting with a sword? I, you know, too many questions. Anyway, I, I don't give a shit about this show. I really don't. But I want to talk about it because uh, Peter Jackson apparently got ghosted. So they're not even taking the advice of Peter Jackson after The Hobbit. I don't know if I would either. But uh, he apparently got ghosted by Amazon. You know, there were rumors that. Um, and I don't know if it's been confirmed or not, that they had a Tolkien expert on staff and they they shit-canned him <laughs> you know, because he was saying, hey, this isn't Tolkien, this isn't Tolkien. So what we're going to have is is a very, very, very expensive fan fiction. And uh, this might actually be peak 2015 thinking. You know, uh, we talk about this where we had a lot of people come into fandoms and established IP uh, 2014, 2015, and decide they wanted to change everything about the franchise uh, to suit their own current year sensibilities. And this might be the most expensive, the most disastrous example of 2015 thinking ever. It might wind up costing Amazon a ridiculous amount of money, and it might send a stronger signal to Hollywood that they need to uh, walk it back a little bit, right? Uh, we see that Warner Brothers is doing that. They're canceling movies that they think are not going to work out. A lot of them just, just coincidentally happen to be quote unquote woke or happen to deviate from the source material or whatever. We saw Netflix cancel a bunch of shows that were, uh, I would consider activist shows, anti-racist baby and stuff like that, that wouldn't have a lot of mass appeal. And if Lord of the Rings on Amazon winds up being a dud, you know, th that might be it. That might be game over. You know, it might be that it is such an expensive flop that sends a signal finally to Disney and some of the other studios that they need to uh, stay a little closer, stick a little closer to the source material, try not to alienate fans, try not to push fans away actively by making your marketing all about attacking the fans. Fans don't like major changes to franchises. Uh, Etc. might be a, a really good lesson learned. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to be honest. I do not know how it's going to go one way or the other. I just know that I personally do not give a shit. But to be honest, I checked out after The Hobbit because I thought The Hobbit was boring as hell. I think you could take those three movies and, and distill it down into one really long movie or uh, two movies. You did not need a trilogy, but that was probably the, the deal. Like, we need another Lord of the Rings trilogy. We'll give you the rights. Uh, it was MGM and uh, Warner. It's like, we'll let you uh, let you have the rights to The Hobbit as long as you make another trilogy so we can make a bunch of money. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Over 273,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. And you know, we're going to talk about these, when we talk about these franchises, right? We do talk about these franchises. And a lot of times what happens is the people that created the franchises are no longer with us or they sold their baby to some corporation and they will never care as much about the property as the creator. Nobody is going to care as much about Tolkien as Tolkien. 
and apparently the Tolkien estate, nobody's going to care as much about Star Wars as George Lucas. You know, it's just product to Disney. It's product to uh, Amazon or whoever has the rights to it. You know, we've seen this time and time again. Nobody's going to care as much about Star Trek as Gene Roddenberry did. Um, some people do, some of the fans do, but then they tend to get gone too. Again, it's just product. Um, and that's what I think this thing is going to be. I think it's going to be product. Um, but if you want to support creator-owned projects, we are going to launch Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Indiegogo pretty soon. It is a 130-plus page hardcover graphic novel. Uh, it is a prequel to Shadowbinders, which was our long-running webcomic. And this is the origin story of, of uh, Crimson Wren. Uh, our main character from Shadowbinders. This is how he came to be Crimson Wren in his younger days. And it's very much like a, a 1980s style adventure. I'd really appreciate it if you guys check it out. I'm going to put a link in the comments. Um, see how I did that? That was, was that a smooth transition? I don't know if it was smooth. I'm not smooth. I'm really not. Anyway, let's talk about this because I've noticed this too. Other than YouTubers talking about it and dunking on it, I'm not hearing a lot of normies talk about Lord of the Rings. You'd think everybody'd be like, oh my God, there's going to be no new Lord of the Rings coming to Amazon this fall. This is like, oh my God, this is like there's new Star Wars and nobody seems to give a shit, really. There's a lot of fighting about it, you know, in nerdy corners of the internet. And again, you have Twitter and YouTube and all that. But for the most part, I don't hear anybody talking about it. And I thought it was just me. I thought it was weird because I saw all these YouTube videos popping up about the show and I honest to God forgot it was a thing or I thought it was like a year or two off. And, um... I thought it was just me, but it's not. I mean, this was just a week or two ago. Uh, MovieWeb put up this article, Why There's So Little Hype for Amazon's Rings of Power series. It's less than two months away. Where's all the excitement? Where's all the excitement? Um, they said the story is going to pull from the appendices of Tolkien's book, the ass end of Tolkien's books, which details the history of Middle-earth, the rise of Sauron, the forging of the Rings of Power. The Rings of Power is set to be one of the biggest television events of the year. Well, we're going to talk about that. It might be one of, but I don't think it's going to be the biggest event of the year. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, or at least on paper, it should be. At least on paper, it should be. Considering the strength and popularity of the show's source material, you know, the fan fiction they made up, it's not a far stretch to expect this series to perform on similar levels to shows like Game of Thrones or the newer Star Wars series on Disney+. Plus. However... Considering how close to release this series is, there seems to be a lack of excitement surrounding it. Here's why that might be and why there's no need to worry too much at this point. One of the biggest reasons for apprehension is how different it will be from the likes of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and Hobbit movies. There are two key reasons for the differences. Firstly, and obviously, uh, it's a time period, and uh, obviously, uh, uh, Peter Jackson's not involved. The show is being produced by Amazon rather than Warner Brothers, who owns the rights to the Peter Jackson films. So let's talk about this real quick. This is a good uh, jumping jumping off point here. Uh, Peter Jackson said he got ghosted. They were going to send scripts to him, and he got ghosted. Uh, this was, what, yesterday, day before? Uh, the Oscar-winning director says Amazon asked him to be involved with its mega-budget Lord of the Rings series and then cut off contact. Amazon suggests the story isn't quite so simple. He said, they asked me if I wanted to be involved. And I said, that's an impossible question to answer without seeing a script. <laughs> and therein lies the rub, because they probably would have sent him a script. He would be like, what the hell is this? So they said, okay, as soon as we get the first couple scripts done, we'll send them to you. And the scripts never showed up. That's the last thing I heard, which is fine. No complaints at all. He said he doesn't have any ill will toward them. Um... You know, he said he'll watch it on TV just like everybody else. Of course, he's going to say that because you don't want to be you don't want to go war with Amazon, right? Because they might uh, throw some money your way at some point in time. So sources close to the project describe a complicated and delicate backstory to the situation. They said the studio has a high regard for Jackson, Jackson and the Rings of Power showrunners have privately attempted to make overtures to the filmmaker. But as the statement suggests, there were also legal concerns about keeping the films, which are owned by Warner Brothers and the TV show separate. So this is a thing too. It's set in a different time period, but also it's technically not a prequel to the movies. And it's sort of a, a bait and switch on audiences, isn't it? They're going to be like, hey, this isn't, this, this isn't technically a prequel to the movie. It's, it's no more this connected than like the Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings animated movie and the Rankin Bass animated movies. Except at least in both of those cases, 
they were based on Tolkien, directly on Tolkien. In this case, they're just making shit up. So they're basically making up fan fiction based on the scraps of information that Tolkien had about the backstory to Lord of the Rings. And they're kind of doing whatever the hell they want to do, add our modern sensibilities to it and all that jazz. And they've doubled, tripled down on that. That's the marketing, right? Which is a disaster. You don't, you don't market your show that way. You want people to be more open to diverse audiences. You don't throw them under the bus by putting them out, you know, front and center in the front lines and be like, look, 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 point, 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 point. Look, we've got black people. Look how progressive we are. I mean, you've just put the crosshairs on your actors and actresses anyway, you know, and you're also calling, calling attention to the fact that that's, that's what the writers think about the show. Like it's, well, tell us the story. What's the story? Mm, Stories, black hobbits. Yeah, we got them. And mm, we might have a couple of gay elves too. Yeah. Gay elves. Imagine that. And mm, Galadriel's a strong female protagonist. She uses a sword and Sauron's hot. Yeah. I mean, seriously, that like, that's, that's your marketing. That's your freaking marketing. I love this. One does not simply offer to send Peter Jackson a Lord of the Rings script and then leave the man hanging. Yeah, so they think there are going to be legal entanglements. So that's that's basically what's going on there. But they said, while the new versions of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings will occur much later in the show's uh, timeline, those stories are not the same versions that fans have already seen on screen. It's not a prequel to the Jackson movies. Difference is also the reason for the lack of any returning cast members, Clay uh, Kate Blanchett's Galadriel and Elrond uh, Hugo Weaving have been recast with younger actors, cheaper actors, who will hopefully bring something new to the roles. Hot Sauron. <laughs> the course of several seasons, Rings of Power will likely build up to the war between Sauron and the last alliance of elves and men, which was depicted in the prologue to The Fellowship of the Ring. The show exists in a new continuity. It isn't beholden to depict that war in the same way as the films. This is going to be a deal breaker for normies. They are expecting the show to be a prequel to the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies trilogy. So again, it's just fan fiction. You you can completely disregard this. It doesn't have any real basis in Tolkien. And it's not even an actual canonical prequel to the Jackson movies. You can completely ignore this shit. And a lot of people are choosing to ignore it. Uh, going out to the rap, I, this surprised me because I forgot I forgot that they were going to do a Game of Thrones prequel too. But at least that's canon. Um, it's not doing well. They said Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragon is lapping the Rings of Power. And they're both coming out at the same time. House of the Dragon comes out on August 21st. And, and I mean, this is after they dropped the ball with the ending of Game of Thrones. People still want to see the prequel, right? Rings of Power premiere September 2nd, and they said that uh, Game of Thrones is, is basically kicking their ass. Look at this. This is Whip Media. They're using the uh, TV Time app to track viewer interest across 21 million global users. According to the data, House of the Dragon boasts nearly 20% more followers on the app leading up to its debut than Rings of Power, giving the former a comfortable lead in terms of fan anticipation. More people are interested in the Game of Thrones prequel, I Forgot Was a Thing, than they are in the Lord of the Rings sort of sort of prequel that I also forgot was a thing. House of the Dragon set 200 years before Game of Thrones. Uh, it's on HBO. And that's the thing too. Like more people have Amazon Prime, I believe, than they have HBO. But more people are excited about Game of Thrones than they are Lord of the Rings. Though House of the Dragon is a linear series first, the, the digital footprint will be key to its success. When accounting for delayed viewings, the final season of Game of Thrones averaged a record-setting 46 million viewers on uh, HBO Max. On uh, Yeah, so Rings of Power is set thousands of years before the events of Fellowship of the Ring and is based on Tolkien's other writings. The crap in the back of the book. <laughs> and is also outperforming its prime brethren, The Wheel of Time, and The Boys in the same span. So there's that. Wheel of Time, though, was a disaster, wasn't it? Uh, even if the upcoming Lord of the Rings series tracks behind House of the Dragon, it's still on target for an impressive debut. So, yeah, I mean, I think people are going to watch it. I don't think that nobody's going to watch it, but it's really interesting to see that there just isn't a lot of buzz. And we're only a couple weeks out. We're less than a month away. And uh, I'm not hearing, again, I'm not hearing normies really talking much about this show. I, you know, I, I mean, you're not hearing people like, oh my God, there's going to be more Lord of the Rings on Amazon. Like, I'm just not hearing it. Now, what will happen, of course, is when the show drops, 
they're going to plaster it all over your Prime video page and people are going to watch it out of default. Like, oh my God, it's new Lord of the Rings. Now, are they going to tell people? Are they going to have a little asterisk and tell people like, it's Lord of the Rings, but it's not really based on anything of Tolkien's other than some offhand remarks he made about stuff and we made a lot of it up and... It's not connected to the Peter Jackson films at all, and it's mostly just a fan fiction, but people are gonna be like, Lord of the Rings? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, look, it'll probably do okay, but the fact that the mainstream media is even like, this isn't going the way that Amazon thought. I think Amazon thought they had like the next Force Awakens on their hand, right? Like people were so excited for a new Star Wars movie with the promise of the original cast, this doesn't have the original cast, but that they were, you know, just waiting and waiting and waiting and they had this massive uh, opening weekend but it doesn't seem like like uh, it's really going the way they want it to go I don't know and again I could be wrong I'm just I'm simply pulling up articles and there are multiple articles talking about the lack of buzz the noticeable lack of buzz around this show but it is Amazon they are in every household pretty much uh, they can push whatever shit they want to push and they will. They're, they'll push it. Once once it drops, they will push the shit out of this. And uh, every man, woman, and child who has an Amazon Fire Stick or, you know, just casually goes to Amazon Prime Video is probably going to have uh, these fanfic elves and dwarves shoved in their faces. And they'll probably tune in out of morbid curiosity, if nothing else. I don't know. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.